What's up guys, Trav White here. Welcome back to the channel where we cover the science of hair and grooming so you can be the most confident version of yourself possible. If you enjoy topics like that, please come join the family. You can do that three ways. First, just hit a like and subscribe on this YouTube channel. Second, come join our men's hair and beard community on Facebook, Mannered Mains. And third, you can also download my free app, Mannered Mains, in the App Store and a Google Play Store. You can do a lot of things in the app. You can discover your hair type, you can find the best products for you, and you can also track your hair and beard growth progress and connect with other guys who are on the same journey as you. All right, so this video is gonna be Three parts, short and sweet. Part one, I'm gonna go over the do's and do, the do's and don'ts. <laughs> I'm gonna go over the do's and don'ts of using sea salt spray. I'm gonna show you a couple different ways to use it, and then I'm going to share some of my favorite sea salt spray brands if you decide that that's the route you want to go. Let's get into it. Oh, yeah. All right, part one, these are gonna be the do's and don'ts of sea salt spray. Like basically who should and shouldn't use it. So if you guys want like a soft, shiny, luscious hair look, right? Sea salt spray is not the product for you. The purpose of sea salt spray is to help your hair look more texturized, look gritty, look a little wavy, sort of like you just dove in the ocean and then turn around and walked back onto shore from the waves, but without doing that. Right, so sea salt spray will make your hair look gritty and matte, but it's not gonna make it look soft and shiny and smooth. So do use sea salt spray if you want that sort of gritty, rugged look. Do not use sea salt spray if you prefer for your hair to look soft and shiny. So next is for guys with short hair. Sea salt spray is great to use as a pre-styling tool because it gives the texture you might want for a matte finish when combined with a clay or a paste. And the best time to apply it as a pre-styler is right after you've just shampooed and conditioned and you're looking to either go out for the night or style it for the day. So I'll, I'll explain a little bit more on that in part two. So if you have short hair, do use it as a pre-styler. Now, if you're a guy with long hair or medium length hair, I would say use sea salt spray sparingly, right? It's really drying if you spray too much. Your whole head can end up just kind of looking dry and dull and sort of messy. So in fact, for men with long hair, I would opt for other products like a texturizing spray or a mousse. However, there are some instances where guys with long hair could possibly use it and I'll explain it in part two also. If you struggle with dry hair, it's probably best to avoid sea salt spray and opt for something more texturizing like a texturizing spray or texturizing cream, something that can still keep your hair conditioned while it adds that textured look. Again, if you're a guy with long hair, I would not use sea salt spray and then go and try and brush your hair. And brush, I mean by detangle brush, not style brush. It's a little counterintuitive, right? Your brush is not gonna flow smoothly through your hair because you're essentially removing that Lip and that shine by adding grit and texture from that sea salt. So it's not good to combine with brushing unless you're spraying it on wet hair and you're using like a round styling brush and you're trying to add waves or volume or something like that. If you struggle with very greasy or oily hair, sea salt spray could be beneficial to absorb a lot of that grease and oil instead of using a dry shampoo, right? Again, go sparingly because you don't want to overdo it. The other option is you can use a dry shampoo, but I do know that a lot of people try to avoid dry shampoos because most of them have like aluminum that sort of works like an antiperspirant to clog and stop that sebum and sweat buildup. Whereas sea salt spray is very absorbing and it absorbs a lot of that grease and oil without clogging any of your pores up. Again, not all dry shampoos clog your pores. There are aluminum free ones that work really well. It just comes down to checking the labels. So if you wanna add some loose waves and get like a more rugged look, sea salt spray could be a really good option. And this is where guys with short hair, medium or long hair. So let's move on to part two. I'll explain how to use it. So for long hair, if you want those gritty waves, the first thing you're gonna do is wash and condition and then lightly towel dry your hair. And then you're gonna apply a few spritzes of sea salt spray, sort of from mid root to ends. And then you're gonna just scrunch them up like you would if you were using a curl cream and you're trying to get curly hair. So this is going to give you a little bit of a different look because curl creams are meant to give you soft, shiny curls with bounce, right? This is going to be more of a gritty, wavy look. I personally am not in love with this look. It's not something I normally do, but if you like that rugged, wavy, just out of the beach look, then go for it. 
If you have medium length hair, a good option can be to just, you know, spritz some sea salt spray all over after you're shampooing and dishing, work it through with your fingers and just sort of let that be your style, right? It can give you a nice rugged look while you try to manage the awkward stage if you're growing your hair out. But again, light spritzes, don't use too much. If you guys are going for volume and this process is the same for short hair or long hair, what you're gonna do is you're gonna spray some sea salt spray on the roots of your hair. So you're gonna come through here, hit the roots, you're gonna come through the middle, hit the roots, and then part your hair over this, hit the roots. And this is gonna be after you shampoo and condition. And then you're gonna take your blow dryer on medium or low heat, and you're gonna twist your round brush upward. You're gonna blow dry upward. So you're gonna do that until your hair is pretty dry, and then you can go and you can add any product you want after that to hold it in. Uh, so in my opinion, if you have long hair, using a volumizing cream is going to be better. Something like the Blue Mana Sen Cream or the KMS Volumizing Spray. Um, I just think sea salt spray is one of those products that's better used for guys with short hair when it comes to styling. And then when it comes to long hair, you know, you can just use it to add a little bit of waves to your hair and you know, that's about it. I personally don't use sea salt spray unless I wanna get some like textured Viking look or something like that, but it really just comes down to personal preference. So let's move on to part three. I'm just gonna share some of my favorite sea salt spray brands. So the biggest problem I see with sea salt spray is the product leaving a sticky film on your hair because it's not formulated super well. So here are some brands that I think do a great job of avoiding this. I personally like the Beard brand Sea Salt Spray. It's also formulated with kaolin clay to help add some hold, and they have aloe vera to sort of offset the drying effect of the sea salt so it can sort of balance it out. It comes in at about 22 bucks, so it's a nice mid-range option. My next favorite one is the Oribe. I'm gonna mispronounce this, but it's basically the Beach Wave Spray. It's lightweight, it lasts a long time, it has UV protection and they are able to give those nice textured waves without the salty stiffness that you might find in other brands. The only downside is that this is really pricey. It's like 44 bucks. But again, you get what you pay for. It's a really, really good sea salt spray. So if you're using it sparingly and you can make it last a long time, this could be one to go for. If not, you can try a more budget-friendly option. Something about half the price I like is the KMS sea salt spray. It does almost as good of a job as the Oribe one does. They have added like grapeseed oil to help with the sealing in of the moisture so it doesn't dry your hair too much. And it also gives you that matte textured finish. So if you're someone who wants the least expensive option, I would say probably the one to go for is the Sunbum Sea Salt Spray. It's like 15 bucks. It gives you UV protection as well. Some of the comments did complain about that sticky residue. So I would just try to not overuse it so just be careful for that and that's all i have for you guys in this video let me know what you guys want to see in the next one peace